connections between letters, um, stroke direction, clockwise, counterclockwise. Topology is the study and analysis of handwriting to assess the writer's traits or personality. From the word study and analysis, ang graphology daw ay pag-aaral ng sulat kamay bilang isang paraan ng pag-aaral ng karakter ng isang tao. Paano siya mag-isip kung ano yung mga personality meron siya or ano yung mga nararamdaman niya kapag nagsusulat siya, galit ba siya, masaya, may nararamdaman kakaiba, yan daw ay naaaral sa graphology. As a means of delineating personality stems from the fact that people almost always write differently from the way they were taught at school. However, the writer combines character from the left to right and from the top to bottom on the page create a unique writing pattern. The writing made up more than 20 elements such as degree of slant, breadth, and height of letter and space between lines, letters, and words represent the different yet interrelated aspect of writer's personality. In graphology is one of these uh, pseudo sciences, it undertaken to determine the varied qualities and attributes of human personality and even of the human character from handwriting alone. It could really do what is undertakes to do the graphology would in many cases be of great assistance in determining the authenticity or the authorship of disputed handwriting. Graphology, handwriting consists of measurable elements such as length and size and the descriptive elements such as letter form and tendency to common denominator for both types of element to permit comfortable objective evaluation. Other problems concern the validity of the interpretation, validation of graphology is complicated by the same difficulties that confront other techniques of psychological testing. And graphology is claimed to be useful for everything from understanding health issues, morality, and the past experience to hidden talents and mental problems. There are a variety of techniques used by the graphologists, even so the techniques of these experts seem to be reducible to expression such as things as the pressure exerted on the page, spacing, the words, in the letter, cross, dot, size, slot, speed, and consistency of the writing. Uh, true graphologists deny it the content of the writing is one of the more important factor in graphological character assessment. So since there is no useful theory as to how graphology might work, it is not surprising that there is no empirical evidence that any graphological characteristics significantly correlate with any interesting personality traits. And graphology is another pipe dreams of those who want a quick and dirty decision making process to tell them who to marry, who did the crime, who they should hire, what career they should seek, where the good hunting is, where the water, oil, or buried treasure is, and etc. And also is another in a long list of quick substitutes for hard work. It's appealing to those who are impatient which is as a troublesome matter as a research evidence analysis, reasoning, logic, and hypothesis testing. If you want a result and you want them now and you want them stated in strong certain terms, graphology is for you. And we proceed to graphologies. And what is graphologies? 
Anthropologists examine loops that the cross, letter spacing, slant, height, ending stroke, and etc. But they believe that just handwriting minutia are physically manifestation of unconscious mental function. And what is unconscious mental functions? It is consists of the processes in the mind which occur automatically and are not available into introspection and include thoughts, processes, memories, interests, and motivations. In Sigmund Freud's psychoanalytical theory of personality, the unconscious mind is defined as the savior of feelings, thoughts, and memories that outside of an unconscious awareness. And graphologists believe just as details can reveal as much about a person as astrology, palm reading, psychometry, or the Mars Bridge personality type indicator. In crime detection, the field of scientific handwriting analysis for legal identification is designed to determine the authenticity of a signature of documents just as will of manuscript without concern for the writer's personality. Handwriting analysis is referred to as graphology. Handwriting may also be regarded as a brain writing. It is expression of a whole personality. Handwriting is expressive movement and this movement have meaning and interpretations. For the study of handwriting, responsible graphologists required at least a full page ink specimen written spontaneously under normal physical condition by a person able to write with the easy before the analysis the graphologist must know the writer's age sex and the nationality none of which revealed by the writing and writing is usually connected with a mental act and even one sentence spoken or written may give hint of the mental or even spiritual status of the man is claimed by the graphologist that the language or message is not considered in a continued writing but when spoken is simply it is important not to be influenced by it. Real handwriting experts are known as forensic document examiners. They examine handwriting to detect the authenticity or perjury. Forensic or question document examiners consider loops that and cross letter spacing slant height ending stroke and etc mr ramman lapas according to him a graphologist who has been involved in handwriting analysis for the last 20 years the movement of your hand is governed by your brain it's mental it's physical it's emotional all these things integrate during the act of your handwriting this give you a picture of who the individual is a person body is projected in his writing, his left side is the right, and the, uh, his right side is the left. It may suggest that the crossing of the neurological pathway is typically in muscles, brain, center, correlational, relevant here. So, yun ano, uh, sabi dito, ang katawan doon ng isang tao, yun ang ginagapit natin sa pagsulat. Then, meron tayong neurological pathways na siya yung nag sa brain natin to execute, para mag-execute yung katawan natin upang magsulat. Ano? Okay, next, uh, the pen in writing. So, sabi dito sa the pen in writing, the appearance of handwriting is a, uh, is in some extent, uh, extent relevant to the pen you use. People are aware of the fact, therefore, people give much thought to the selection of a pen that feels natural to them. So, yun, ano, uh, yung mga sulat natin, o tayong bilang uh, mga writers, pa nagsusulat tayo, di ba, meron tayong comfortable na sa mga ballpen ano so pinipili natin yung ballpen na kung saan yung sulat natin ay maganda o mga comfortable tayo magsulat pag yun yung ballpen na ginagamit natin sabi pa dito but the same person with the same pen never writes the letter or word twice in exactly the same way ano so yun uh, kanina habang nire-review ko to itong report na to so tinesting ko to uh, i-try nyo din na magsulat ng papel uh, same person ikaw din magsulat ka sa sarili mo then same ballpen din isulat mo yung pangalan mo sa isang papel tapos pagsulat mo nun after ulit magsulat ka ulit uh, pagmasdan mo hindi talaga magkapareho yung sinulat mo kahit ikaw pa din yung nagsulat na yun okay, okay next uh, zone uh, sabi dito the upper zone shows 
that a writer thinks how they think what they strive for imagination uh, fright and ethical ideas so sa zone uh, kumbaga uh, dito daw uh, nakalagay yung lawak ng pag-iisip ng isang writers ano kung paano sila mag-isip habang sila ay nagsusulat uh, how sabi dito how they think uh, what they strive for then imagination then pride and ethical ideas ano Uh, sabi pa dito, the lower zone harbor manifestation of things not yet known to the writers there we see what we feel the unconscious in the middle zone, the writer's daily routine is so the social behavior, relationship, uh, preferences and rejection ano? so yun, uh, sa middle zone naman doon doon nakalagay yung mga daily routine uh, doon doon nakikita yung mga daily routine then yung social behavior then relation, preferences and rejections Okay, next, uh, symmetry. So, sabi dito, symmetry is the yardstick of the writer's inner balance and development. Symmetry is used to establish style value. So, yan, ano, yan yung mga, ang symmetry, yan yung uh, mga mauhusay na writers o mga proportion ng isang writers. Ano, uh, when, the, uh, when the upper zone are strongly developed, we are dealing with a person of intelligence and ambition. So, yun, ano, pagka totally developed na yung upper strong, uh, yung Uh, the upper zone uh, yan daw yung mga person na intelligence and may ambition sa buhay uh, however, their emotional development remain infantile uh, if, the mid, uh, if the middle zone is strongly developed, this is a person whose sentimental and sensitivity and concern for themselves ano? so yun, uh, pag sa middle zone naman ang totally developed, uh, sila daw yung mga, mga uh, sensitive na tao uh, masyado silang sensitibo then a uh, concern for their develop uh, for their themselves or development ano uh, concern sila sa kanilang mga sarili are likely to result in emotional pain so sila din yung mga kumbaga eh, may hinang tao ano may uh, uh, lagi silang emotional in the lower zone uh, is overlap we are dealing with a writer who is over concerned with money yun naman pag uh, overdevelop uh, pag overdevelop naman yung isang writers uh, sila naman yung mga they, uh, we, uh, they are dealing with a writer who is over concerned in money so uh, pag uh, maano sila sa pera uh, gusto nila laging magkaroon ng pera kapag concerned sila sa mga natatanggap nilang mga money okay next uh, legibility sabi dito legibility is the measure of the writer's sense of purposefulness ano so dito naman sa legibility na kapalog dito uh, kung paano mo basahin yung sinulat ng isang writers ano kung saan yung purpose na to sabi nga dito purposefulness ano sabi pa dito legible handwriters make good teachers and speaker ano yung mga magaling daw na handwriters ano ah uh, Good teachers daw nila, uh, good teachers din daw sila and speakers ano. They are sincere and cooperative. So, uh, lagi daw silang seryoso sa mga kanilang mga ginagawang activity and cooperative ano. Uh, but beware of the person whose writing is impressively legible. Ano, yun uh, mag-iingat daw sa mga taong uh, talagang mahusay sa pagsusulat ano. Sabi dito, uh, these people are wolves in sheep clothing. So, Uh, akala mo daw sila imababait uh, magaling sila magbalat kayo uh, sabi nga dito wolves in sheep clothing uh, akala mo sila mga tupa pero sila pala mga wolves ano parang sa politics ganun okay next uh, size of letters uh, sabi dito the size of letters is indicative of the writer's self reliance a letter may extend in four direction okay first is up Uh, second down, right or left a letter may also be tall and wide tall capitals are people who tower above the rest uh, sila doon yung mga nasa taas uh, tall initial uh, come from impressive people so pag ang initial mo yung first start letter mo is mataas uh, kayo daw yung mga sabi dito kayo daw yung mga impressive people sabi pa dito sa some capitals are Uh, small capitals are people who are modest in nature so yan uh, sabi pa dito they concentrate on facts not ideas with letter are ex- uh, extroverted people narrows letter come from uh, loners so yun okay next uh, connection of letters sabi dito the connection of letters shows the writer's attitude toward other 
in writing the L3 mainly use in link Garland Arcades, Arcades and Angle. So dito sa connection of letters ah uh, it represents naman the attitude of the writers. Ano? Sabi pa dito, deep Garland indicate people who take things to tragically. So ang mga deep Garland naman daw sila daw yung may mga malulungkot na uh, kasaysayan. Ano? Sabi uh, next is in close Garland close garland are people who tend to be calculating so sila naman do yung mga taong makukwenta ano so flat garland tend to come from the practical businessman so sila yung mga practical na tao like uh, businessman square garlands uh, trend to come from narrow minded people so dito naman uh, ito do yung mga tao na nirepresent nito yung mga tao na hindi nag-accept ng opinion na nanggaling sa ibang mga ta sa ibang tao Supported Garland come from people who need emotional support in life. Ano? So, so supportive Garland naman, yun daw yung mga tao na kailangan ng uh, support ng mga emotional. General Archage show people who really instinct. Ano, yung, may, yung mga, uh, yung ugali nila. Uh, uh, pinapakita lang nila kung ano yung tunay nilang ugali. Ano? Uh, high Archage, Archage, show art, uh, aristic gift. Low Archage, show hypocrisy. General ang uh, ang girls show people who have contradiction in feelings ano so yun yung mga mapagkunwari tapos yung may mga contradiction in feelings sa kanilang mga sarili Okay next is uh, space between letter ano sabi dito space between letters show the extent the writers release upon their own in intuition when all letters are connected it indicates a person uh, with logical and systematic so pagka ang ang letters daw is uh, connected uh, persons with logical uh, logical daw yung tao na yun tapos systematic ano uh, systematic thinking kung bagay magagaling silang mag-isip at uh, space between words so ito naman yung mga space sa words hindi naman sa letters kung kanina ang space is between letters ito naman uh, space between words so sabi dito space between the words is non-deliberate when we write the words follow one another as they do in speech uh, when a person speak with possess yeah it may it may be because they are accustomed to pondering and considering before they act so pagka yung uh, uh, yung people daw is pamagsalita ng papost post so uh, iniisip daw nila muna kung ano yung kalalapsan ng kanilang sinabi It may also because the person wants to let the word sink in to the audience uh, consciousness. Uh, pwede naman daw na kaya daw huminto yung isang uh, uh, nagsasalita, gusto daw nila mag sink in sa tao kung ano yung mga sinasabi. However, on the other hand, if the post, uh, if the post outweigh the importance of the speech, then we may conclude the speaker is connected if there is no post between the writer's words then we may say this is a person of action this person will also be impulsive sometimes uh, writer's words are widely spaced and other times narrowly spaced uh, we may say that this writer is unstoppable in both thinking and emotion okay uh, last is the direction of line so sabi dito instruction in writing has usually uh, insisted in writing in straight line when we buy writing paper it is ruled in a straight line ano so kuno napansin niyo pagka bumili uh, tayo ng uh, papel so merong mga straight line ano so yun yung mga fina-follow natin but even after years of practice the reality is that few people write in straight line the deviation from writing is in a straight line are not the exception but more than norm so may, medyo tumatabingi so pag wala ng line yung pagsulat natin uh, kung napansin ninyo nag-iiba yung direction ano in some case uh, patig can be considered a reason for descending line ano so uh, maaari itong reason na to kung bakit tumatabingi yung pagsulat natin uh, dahil pagod tayo ano so pagka pagod tayo o yung katawa natin is pagod uh, may tendency na tumabingi yung sulat natin kasi wala tayo sa condition okay uh, general speaking descending line maybe because by depression or pessimism so uh, pag tumatabingi daw yung ating sulat ng isang writer so maaari daw ito nakakaranas ng 
depression ano kaya nagkakaroon ng pagtabingi or optimism uh, or pessimism experience show that people in a mood swing may temporary right in the descending line so maaari din ng ito na ang mood ng isang tao is uh, paiba-iba kaya nagkakaroon ng descending line kaya tumatabingi yung sulat ng isang tao kasi pabago-bago yung kanyang uh, mood on the other hand ascending line may indicate optimism when we right we move from left to right in other words we progress the activity of writing may therefore be interpreted as a movement toward the future it may be said it represents our hopes and dreams a person who writes a straight line may also go straight toward his daily aim so yun uh, pag ang isang writers daw is nagsusulat ng straight so meron siyang aim ano kung meron siyang uh, tinatarget o may gusto siyang maabot sa buhay If a person writes in a precisely straight line, we may say the person is unyielding. So, pag precisely naman, uh, precise, uh, precisely straight line, so hindi siya napapabayaan. Kung bagay, uh, alam niya din yung kanyang goal. Ano, bagay, hindi niya pinapabayaan yung kanyang sarili. People who write in convex line, so pag matambok naman daw, uh, a line that ascends, ascends, then descends, start their project with ambitions and enthusiasm only to lose interest and give up before the task has been completed. Ayon. Pace of writing Specific pace furnishes us with a variety of human characteristics. Spontaneous writing, ambition, activity, instability, restlessness, impatience, quick thinking. A spontaneous writing Flexible, cautious, sluggish, flutter, scammer. Concealing stroke. There are two interpretations of the concealing stroke. Inhibitation and insincerity are the basic meaning of the concealing stroke. In the first letter, frustrated ambition. In upper zone, secretive. Middle zone, emotional delusion. In garlands, shyness. In arcades, Should and in angels, trickster. Problems. Get a sticker when trying to draw personality inference from handwritten samples. Remember, this is the realm of graphology, but it might be interesting to look at a few traits of interest to criminal justice and criminology. Be advised that these are not definitive interpretation by any means because there are over 30 different systems of graphology in existence. Graphology systems tend to be one of three types. Those based on individual letter formations. Those based on stroke analysis. Those based on unrealistic gestalt method. Over 3,000 private business companies use it routinely and it enjoys a growing sense of scientific respect, respectability. The courts appear to be waiting to see college psychology courses on it. It probably has the most validity with the following domains. Intelligence, attitudes toward work, interpersonal skills. Recent developments have focused on profiling of uncaptured criminals and sex offenders where handwriting analysis say they can spot a per- perversion not exactly the best word for it there's some pr- precedent in art therapy and projective psychological testing for graphology many convictions of child sex offenders have occurred because of what the child victim portrayed in drawing and with psychological testing there's the famous draw a fig assignment which apparently contains everything you need to make a subjective personality assessment from were placed on paper the size of the pig the pressure applied the direction the fig is facing attention to details then quality angular or curve stroke and emphasize on head of feet. Chapter 4 
calligraphy and cagography. What is calligraphy? Calligraphy is from a Greek word meaning beautiful writing. It's the art of fine handwriting. The term may, may refer to letters, words, pages, or even whole documents to which aesthetic principles and skill penmanship have been applied. Differs from inscription in referring only to scripts written on perishable materials such as paper rules, parchment, textiles, or paper. In the Far East, calligraphy is produced by means of a pointed brush held vertically. In Western and Islamic cultures, calligraphy writing is accomplished by using a broad edge with quill or nib held at a slab. Calligraphy The study of ancient writing is concerned both with calligraphy and with inscription on stone, bone, metal, or other hard surface. It's the study of historic writing system and deciphering and dating of historical manuscripts including the analysis of historic handwriting. Calligraphy terms Ascender refers to the portion of the letter rises above the waistline. Ascender line refers to the guideline showing the height of an ascending letter. Baseline refers to the writing line that the body of a letter sits upon. Branching stroke refers to the stroke which connects an arc to the down stroke of a letter. Cap line refers to the guideline showing the height of a capital letter. Counter, it is the white space inside a letter. Crossbar refers to the horizontal stroke forming part of a letter such, a, such as T or H. Descender refers to the portion of a letter that falls below the baseline. Downstroke, it is a stroke directed downwards towards the baseline or the center line. Dactus refers to the number, direction, and sequence of the strokes which make up a letter. Flourish, it is a non-structural embellishment added to a letter. Hairline refers to a very thin line. Majuscule refers to a capital letter or uppercase letter. Minuscule refers to a lowercase letter. Nib is the pen point. Nib width refers to the width of any broad edge tool. A letter written as four nib widths high will appear twice as heavy as one written at eight nib, nib widths high with the same pen. Pen angle refers to the angle at which the nib width meets the paper relative to the baseline. Serif refers to a small stroke which begins or ends a letter of a part of a letter. Slant refers to the slope of a letter measured from the vertical. Slant line refers to the guideline showing the correct slant. Spacing counter space refers to the space inside a letter. Interletter space refers to the space between letters. Interword space refers to the space between words. Interliner space refers to the space between lines of writing. Thick refers to a heavy or blunt stroke. Thin refers to a fine stroke sometimes called hairline. Waistline refers to the guideline showing the correct position for the upper boundary of the X height. X height refers to the height of a letter or the position of a letter that sides between the base line and the waistline, the height of the lower case X. Cogography is defined as bad handwriting or bad spelling. It derived from the Greek word grapus is writing. Prefix with kakos, kakos is bad. We are more familiar with this as the beginning of cacophony. Cacophony is bad noises. Despite the association of the ideas, it has nothing to do with our cack handed, which derives from the 
old English car. Car is ex extremely. When calligraphy began to appear in English at the end of the 16th century, it did so with the sense of bad spelling. It was beginning to be thought that the old way of spelling was by personal preference ought to give way to a standardized system. The introduction of printing had a lot to do with this. So, cagography was seen as the opposite of orthography. Orthography, it means correct spelling. In the following century, cagography was used to mean bad handwriting as well as the opposite of yet a third Greek word, calligraphy, fine writing. The word is marked as a archaic in my dictionary stood. It still turns up from time to time. A typical usage was the written horror writer, H.P. Lovecraft, who, who describes the manuscript of this novel, Quebec, as 136 pages of cagography. In, refer, in reference, presumably, to the handwriting rather than the spelling. Someone who exhibits either feeling is a cagographer. I'm Mike Mandel. I'm a professional graphologist, among other things. I've been doing it since 1993, and I want to show you some really cool things that you can learn about other people from their handwriting almost instantly. And believe me, it really does work. In fact, University of Heidelberg, the Sorbonne in Paris, Around the world, handwriting has been verified empirically through thousands of samples as being absolutely indicative as to what the personality is. So you can take this stuff to the bank. Let me show you a couple of quick things. Believe it or not, you already intuitively know a lot about handwriting analysis without being taught. For example, let's look at three quick samples here. We'll look at A and B for three different words or names. Here we have Mike and we have Mike. Which Mike is the more aggressive one or feeling more angry and aggressive? I bet you picked A. Angles show aggression, angles show energy, and with the amount of pressure put on the chalk here, this is an angry, aggressive, forward-moving person, and this person is much more relaxed and laid back. What about the second example, hello? The question is, which one is feeling optimistic and which one is feeling pessimistic? Or which one is up and which one is down, to make it even simpler? If you pick that B is the more optimistic, you're correct, because the upward slope to the writing is a clear sign of optimism and positive attitude at that time, where the way this word drops is an indicator of feeling down or depressed at that moment. And what about the third one, A or B? What and what? The question is, which person is holding their emotions back and which is more outgoing and leaning towards other people? Well, A is holding the emotions back. The back slanted writer pulls their emotions back from other people as a protection. In fact, if the writing is severely back slanted, you're dealing with damaged goods. The person has probably had something severe or unsettling happen in their past at some point. Whereas this has a natural forward slant to the writing and indicates someone who is much more open and outgoing and leaning towards other people. But there's way more than that. A knowledge of graphology, real graphological principles, can make you seem like a psychic to people. I do graphology lectures throughout the university and college circuit, and it always blows people's minds. Students hang around for an hour afterwards to have me look at their writing, and they think I can read their minds. They say, how can you possibly know that about me? Let me give you a couple of examples here. The small letter T. Do you know how high you put the bar, how tall you make the T, and how high you put the crossbar in your T? Tells all kinds of stuff about you. Look. Let's take a word like tell. This is someone who has good self-esteem and they're optimistic as well. How do I know that? Because the bar on the T is higher than that letter E and it goes up on a slight angle as well. Remember the up slant is optimism. And the fact that the bar is high, this shows how high you set your crossbar in life that you jump over. People with distant goals, long, powerful, strength of will to get there are the Donald Trumps of the world. And you can believe me, they have T-bars that are set extremely high and long and aggressively because they are reaching for the goal. The alternative is also true, unfortunately, which is a T-bar that's very low. A T-bar that's low like this, and in this case, it's lower than the letter E. 
This is not only someone who underestimates their own abilities, but someone who does not believe in themselves. This is the person with low self-esteem. And if you add to this a downward slant to the writing and put the two together, you say, here's somebody with low self-esteem who's depressed as well. And so you just glance at the writing and you see low T-bars and a downward slope and you instantly know that this person, no matter how they present themselves to you, are going through something that is making them feel down about themselves, lack of confidence is showing, and they may be getting depressed as well. Powerful, powerful stuff. Let me show you a couple more. Here's some really cool stuff. And believe me, you're going to think, how can that possibly be true? Now realize this comes from thousands and thousands of samples. Scientists, information scientists, sociologists, graphologists have looked at thousands of samples to come to these conclusions. Let's look at 10,000 alcoholics and see what they're writing has in common. Let's look at 10,000 people who are high achievers and see what their writing has in common. It's done through large numbers, the same as any science, and can we then make predictions based on what we know? And the answer is yes. So here's some stuff that is wacky, but you'll like it. Lower zones. Now, lower zones are where loops go down below the letter. So we have a letter like a G. There's the body of the letter, but there's a loop that goes down and comes back and crosses this imaginary baseline that the letter's sitting on. Do you know the size of that loop tells us all kinds of stuff about you? The bigger the loop, the larger number of friends you need. So a loop like this that's really big, this person needs way more friends than this person. And this person, if that's a G, doesn't really need any close friends at all. This person would have one close friend or maybe none. And this person can go it alone when they have to. If they're stuck in a cabin with a handful of books and nobody's around and they're in a snowstorm, they'll be okay. This person will go nuts to use the medical term. They need people around them. Also, the size of the lower loop shows your sexual appetites. These big, huge lower loops mean a strong, healthy sexual appetite and a desire for things, money and stuff, and even food in some cases. But what if the loops go weird like this? That's not a loop at all, and that's a G. Now notice, in order for this to be the actual trait, there must be a point and it must go lashing back to the left. This is what graphologists call the felon's claw. The felon's claw appears in something like 80% of the handwriting of people in the American penitentiary system. This is a sign of manipulation. This is a dangerous trait to have around you. You would never hire a babysitter or go into a business relationship if your business partner had felon's claws. Now remember, you cannot judge people from a single letter with a slip of a pen does not mean they're psychotic. Neither do you go by something written on a blackboard or with a marking pen. It's got to be their typical handwriting and ideally done sitting down comfortably with an unlined sheet of paper and their favorite pen or pencil. You want the conditions to mirror exactly how they would typically write as closely as possible. Having said that though, let me give you a real interesting key about handwriting. Weird handwriting equals weird person. Weird lower zones really weird person. So we already saw the felon's claw, which I said could be in a G or it could be in a Y as well. But what if the lower zone is something like this? Let's make this a G. Oh, look at that twist in the loop. This is scary, scary stuff. And this is where weird sex drives and sexual deviation to the nth degree shows up. The weirder the lower zones, the more bizarre sex the person is likely to be involved in. If you see this in handwriting, you don't know if it's German shepherds or chandeliers or whipped cream. You just hope to God it's not all three. Let me show you one more amazing thing about handwriting that's very cool. The signature. The signature is not your personality. The signature is the personality you present to the world. It's the way you want to be seen. It's a persona. It's not you. So ideally, if you're going into a business relationship or a personal relationship with somebody, make sure their handwriting and their signature look the same. If their handwriting and their signature match, if it looks like their, their signature was just written in their handwriting, guess what? What you see is what you get. There is no persona. You may not like what you get, but you're getting the real deal. If you've got a, a legible handwriting and a completely illegible all over the place signature, the person is making a presentation. They're holding something about themselves back and aren't being completely open about who they are. It's a defense. But here's another thing. If I see the handwriting of a number of people, I can often just distill it with couples to the signature of the husband and wife and determine whether or not their marriage is on the rocks. Just from that, because if a woman marries a man and takes on his married name, or her married name is his surname, the space she puts between the first name, her name, and her husband's name shows how close they are together in her mind. So if you look at the first one, Susan Greaves, 
She's married to Mr. Greaves. Look at the space here. You can tell from this, just from this signature, this woman is not feeling close to her husband for whatever reason. Likewise, Jenny Roberts, if she's married, is feeling very nice and cozy with her husband. The signature is showing the two names very close together. But what about Rick Stevens here? Obviously, it's not a married name. It could be, um, he could be a married man. He could be an unmarried man. But from this signature, what do we notice? We see he has scored out his surname, just the last name. And when you see that, he would probably justify it and say, well, it's how I cross the T in Stevens. No, no, no. The reason you do it is because of what's happening unconsciously. He has unconsciously crossed out the family name and has issues either with his dad or his grandfather, someone close who is carrying the family name. He is destroying it in his mind and setting up some distance between him and it. So make no mistake, the writing shows you all kinds of things about the personality. It never lies. And by understanding just a few graphological simple principles, you can make some amazing, amazing discernments about other people and know them inside out. They'll think you are a psychic.